Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the AP Top 25 for college basketball. Of course, this has been a series we've been covering throughout this collegiate basketball season. There's been a ton of shakeups and move arounds. And I think this video is going to be really good at showing exactly what teams are ready for March Madness. Of course, we're getting into the back end of February here. So we're only about a month away from the start of March Madness. It's going to be absolutely crazy. There's a ton of really good teams this year, and I think it's going to be a very competitive March Madness as well. So let's get into it here in the top 25. We're also going to start by talking about one of the teams that is in the category of others receiving votes, and that would be Rutgers there, where they had 35 total votes. You see Iowa has the 25th spot with 59 points. So Rutgers with 35 means they were in a position where they were pretty close to actually making the top 25. And that's not surprising. They had had three straight upset wins over ranked opponents. And then they also went up against Purdue. And it took Jaden Ivey's best game of the season to keep Rutgers at bay in that one. Rutgers, of course, if they had won that game against Purdue, probably would have been a top 20 team. Now find themselves currently ranked 27th, essentially, with where the votes are. But they're a team to keep our eyes on because they have Ron Harper Jr., Geo Baker. I also like Andre Hyatt off the bench for them when he comes in in spot minutes. This team has some wings. They've got some perimeter defensive capabilities uh, and they can move their feet well on that end of the floor. So I think they're a team to watch for getting back up into the top 25. And now here we are here with 25. We've got Iowa at 18 and eight in the Big Ten, of course, led by Keegan Murray, someone who's going to be a lottery pick more likely than not in the NBA draft this coming draft. And then also they've got some other nice players on their team. You look at his twin brother, Chris Murray. They've also got Bohannon, who's a guard there. They're a good team. They had a big win over Ohio State this past week, which is really what helped solidify them as a top 25 type of team. Alabama at 24, they've been really up and down. When you look at I, or Alabama, they've had a ton of really good wins, but they've also had some really big time head scratching losses, which when you have a team like that, it concerns me for their top 25 status because you get them into a March Madness style tournament where they have to go against some of the lower ranked teams in the nation, you know, teams between that 40 to 60 mark. And I think Alabama is susceptible to lose early, which is, you know, something that if you're considering for your March Madness bracket, Alabama is a team I would not have going very far. I just think there's too many inconsistencies. There's a ton of talent on this team. I like what they have in terms of the actual talent standpoint. It's just the inconsistencies uh, really do scare me for this team. Then we see St. Mary's here up in the top 25 they've had a really good season 22 wins six losses only in the west coast conference this team's interesting again i wouldn't have them going super far in march madness but i think they could probably get out of the round of 64 and maybe out of the round of 32 so i think they're going to be a team to watch depending on where the seating really sets them ohio state here 22nd overall ej liddell had his worst game of the season against iowa they did a really good job bringing help to him every time he caught down low and in the post area. And he also seemingly had some issues with his IQ during that game as well. There's times he's trying to post up the high guard in a two, three zone. Not exactly sure what he thought he was going to get out of that. Cause of course there's just going to be help defense behind that guard there. It was confusing to me. EJ Liddell struggled. And when he struggles, so does Ohio state. Now I still think that they're a top 25 team. Uh, and I feel a little bit more confident about them than I do about Iowa, Alabama, and St. Mary's, even though Iowa just beat them. Ohio State, I think come tourney time, EJ Liddell's presence defensively is going to be enough to help them get through the round of 32. And I think they're a team that could really make some noise in the Sweet 16, even if they get that far. Pick 21, we got UConn here. Of course, no James Booknight this year. He got ejected from a game, actually, as a viewer the other night. UConn's pretty good. 19-7, uh, I've been talking about the Big East all year. It's really, really strong conference in college basketball. And I think it's going to be a bloodbath there to see who actually comes away with the Big East championship. Moving on to 20, we got Texas in the Big 12. They're one of the few teams here that started out in the top 10 that just haven't lived up to expectations. But they've had a really solid season on both ends of the floor when you consider where their offensive and defensive ratings are at. Uh, their efficiency numbers are actually pretty good. Their win-loss record isn't where you'd want it to be, but I think a lot of signs point to them finding success in March Madness when you consider the fact that it is a very talented roster, you have a good coach, uh, and I think Texas could make some noise in March Madness. 19, Murray State, we got them on here. Of course, very awesome to see the team that John Morant put on the map back up in the top 25, even without John Morant. 
they've really built up this program in the Ohio Valley, 26 and two. Now, if they're going up against better competition, they probably wouldn't have that, that type of record. And it would be more difficult in the Big 10 or Big 12 or even the SEC. But Murray State, they do deserve to be up here just based on how they've played. You have to go in and play the teams you're scheduled against. And they've done just that and really succeeded in those matchups. 18, we got Arkansas here. Uh, another intriguing team in the SEC. Tennessee as well at 17, led by guard Kennedy Chandler. He is pesky. Now, I think his draft stock has fallen a little bit because I think there's going to be some concerns about his half-court scoring ability. But defensively, he's going to get up India. And he's a pretty good facilitator as well. And then 16, we have USC, a team I've been extremely high on seeing the Pac-12 here, 23 and 4. Now, Pac-12 is not very strong. Don't get me wrong. But that 23 and 4 record is legit. Isaiah Mobley is one of the better players in college basketball right now. I really do believe that in terms of what he can do impact wise defensively, his length and size really does help him around the rim defensively. And then offensively, he can step out behind the three point line with ease. I think USC's got a puncher's chance this year to make it to the Elite Eight. Uh, very possible we could see them as a Final Four team as well. I don't think I would hit the over on that. I think I'd be more confident saying they're an Elite Eight type of team. Uh, just because of how strong the very top is. But uh, Elite Eight would be a really good season for USC. Illinois here at 15. Kofi Coburn's been huge, both literally and figuratively, for this Illinois team. Of course, one of the biggest players in college basketball. He's massive, and he's hard to stop with one guy at the collegiate level. Now, at the NBA level, I don't think he's going to be nearly as successful uh, as he's been in college. But uh, right now, we're talking about the college game. So... For Kofi Coburn, I think it's huge for Illinois that they keep going to him. And then Andre Curbelo is going to have to be the guy who takes them home at the end of games. When when going gets tough, they need a guy who can create, and that's Andre Curbelo there for the Fighting Illini. 14, we got Houston here. They've had a really good season as well in the American Athletic Conference, kind of similar to what we talked about with Murray State and USC. Conference is a little bit weaker, but 22-4, and four, still a really good record, and it's deserved to be this high Wisconsin 21 and five of course they're kind of at the hub of everything in college basketball right now when you consider what happened with Jawan Howard and Michigan by the way my stance on Jawan Howard he should be fired for that that is unacceptable and just honestly really embarrassing for the University of Michigan of course they suspended him five games for the rest of the regular season I think that was too lenient uh, they should have had a stricter Approach with him, I thought, but uh, when you're a former NBA player, you get away with a few more things. That's for sure. So Wisconsin here, 21 and five, they've had a great season. Uh, really, really good on them for the the record that they have because they're doing it in the Big Ten, 21 and five. That's tough. Johnny Davis has been huge, probably one of the favorites for Naismith Player of the Year just because of how great he's been on uh, the Win Player of the Year. I mean, he's awesome. So. I think Johnny Davis and Wisconsin has a real chance to making even the final four, just given the fact that I think he could take you home at the end of games. UCLA, the Bruins here, 19 and five, another Pac-12 team. Again, Pac-12 is not that great. You got UCLA, USC, and that's about it. They're in the Pac-12, also Arizona, excuse me. But uh, for UCLA, when I look at this team, I like what they have on the wing. I just don't know if I'm getting enough consistent center minutes for this team to be really great especially if you're going to deal with a team like Gonzaga who has Drew Timmy and Chad Holmgren you need a little bit more size I think UCLA could get back to the final four they have that type of talent but it's going to be tougher than it was last year for them just given the fact that college basketball right now the bigs in Gonzaga specifically are going to be a tough challenge for them Providence at 11 in the big east of course they slid down a little bit this past week 22-3 record, though, is legit in a really good conference there in the Big East. It's a deep conference, and they're a team that uh, I think can do a lot of damage come March Madness. I'm going to be interested in seeing exactly how they play when we get to the bigger games because uh, I think they're a team that would be interesting to watch to see how they adjust uh, to more national recognition, more media, because Providence, you know, kind of usually flies under the radar. When you're a top 10 team in the nation or near it, there's going to be a lot of pressure on you. Moving into the top 10, we got Baylor, Texas Tech, Villanova, Duke, and Kentucky from 10 to 6. And this is a really talented 10 to 6. Shout out to Texas Tech for having another great season after their head coach departed. Baylor, I thought they were going to run the number one seed all year long. Didn't happen. They've had some tough games, lost a few head scratchers, but I think they're going to be a team 
that gets right back into the thick of things here. I wouldn't be surprised if they won it all again this season. That's how talented they are. I uh, like James Akinjo there. He was the transfer out of Arizona. They've got a ton of talent, and I think Baylor could do really, really well in March Madness. Villanova, uh, I've, I've talked about them explicitly here on the channel. I think that they're going to have a, a pretty good March Madness as well. I see them more as a team that gets bounced in the Sweet 16. I don't necessarily see them as an Elite 18 myself. Duke and Kentucky, though, these two teams are great. Uh, Duke and Kentucky, they're probably the best they've been for a little while. And I think that they're going to make some noise come March Madness, Boncaro for Duke, and then Ty Ty Washington for Kentucky. Those two guys are going to be the ones getting it done for those two programs. Kansas, Bill Self, I believe it's 20 straight seasons with 20 plus wins. He's been magnificent in his time at Kansas, and I, I see that you know holding true here. Ochai Baji's had a, a big improvement from his sophomore to junior campaign, and it's definitely helped his draft stock as well a bit. Purdue at four, it's all about Jaden Ivey there. How much can he get downhill? Can he play with that same fiery he had against Rutgers and bring that energy? Because they're going to need it. He has to be their primary scoring guy, their primary scoring option in, at Purdue. And if he does that, I could see them winning a national title. That's how good this team is around him. They just need him to take a scorer's mentality the rest of the way. Three, two, and one. Of course, we've got Auburn, Arizona, and Gonzaga here. Gonzaga is the leading scoring team in the nation, averaging a ton of points this year. Arizona is very interesting. And Auburn, two losses in the past couple of weeks, definitely does hurt them a little bit. They fall down from one a few weeks ago, down to three now. Finally, last week, of course, they were two there. And they're the best team in the SEC. Jabari Smith is for real. He's a beast. I love what he brings offensively. Walker Kessler's the best rim protector in the nation. They can make some noise, and I would not be shocked at all if Auburn is the team that walks away with the national title, because I think right now they should be considered the favorite, honestly. Arizona, I love what they have top to bottom. They're very well-rounded. And then you also look at what Ben Matherin and uh, Christian Coloco are for you. They're the top two players, and they're the guys that they can trust going together in the pick and roll down the stretch of games. I think Ben Matherin's really set up for a huge March Madness. I think he's going to cement himself as a top five pick. And then Gonzaga, 23-2, and two, like I talked about. It's all about their bigs there. Uh, their guards, Nemhard, he's had a good season, but... Ultimately, if they're going to win a national title, it's going to be with the ball in Chet Holmgren's hands and Drew Timmy's hands. And I think Gonzaga, I like what they have. I just don't know if I would actually seriously pick them over an Auburn at this point, just given what Auburn has for rim protection. I think that Auburn matches up extremely well with Gonzaga. You would put Jabari Smith on uh, Chet Holmgren, and then you would put uh, Walker Kessler on Drew Timmy. And I think that becomes an extremely tough matchup for Gonzaga to overcome on the offensive end of the floor. Uh, but I think it would be a bloodbath, and I think it would be a really great game. I think Auburn's my favorite as of right now. Let me know your guys' favorites in the comments section for who you think is going to win March Madness. This has been the AP Top 25. Give me your thoughts and your comments in the comments section. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.